Hello everybody who clicked on this video to see information about this book. You're probably wondering, what is this book? This book is a bootleg illegal book I found on the internet about Fallout. Now, there are many books on the internet called Fallout that don't have to deal with the Fallout series. However, this does, as on the back it mentions Fallout 3, Bethesda, Fallout New Vegas, Obsidian Entertainment, and things like that. Now, this book was $20. And it is... It's a trip. It's something different. And you're probably wondering, how did this person write this and get it published? I have no idea. Because he did not get the rights. Because I have two other books here we can compare a bit. I have another game book. Star Wars Galaxies, The Ruins of Dantooine, written by Veronica Whitney. And as you can see on the back of here, we have Ballantine books, science fiction by Del Rey, and LucasArts. And if we go to another game book, World of Warcraft, or just Warcraft, Lord of Clans by Christy Golden, you see on the back of here, Blizzard Entertainment. Kind of topical, but you know. Printed in USA, all rights reserved, blah, blah, blah. You have all that. Now I have to cover something up on the back of here. Because he put his picture on the back of the book. And I don't want to, like, dox him. I don't want to get out in trouble. As you can see, there is no Bethesda or Zenimax media on the back of here. There is an Outskirts Press. That, those are the people who published his book. However, he did not go to Bethesda, get the rights to make this. And it's like, well, how do you know this is about Fallout, the series? Because, as you can see right there, it mentions Fallout is based on themes created by Bethesda Games Studios. Oop. Oh, crap. You saw him a little bit. Games Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. So, I'm going to flip that over. Just so you can... And this, this book, don't mind the little Yogi Bear bookmarker I got. Or not Yogi Bear. Jeez. Smokey the Bear. Yeah, this book... It, it, it's a trip. It, it, it's very strange. So... Some things before we get into the review of the story, which... Is... All over the place. So, the book has a review in the front of it. See, producers... It's got a whole bunch of marketing audience stuff. And on this page, the reviewer was from Voyage Media. You can't see, but Voyage Media is up there. Voyage Media, if you type their name into Google, the first thing that comes up is a scam. It says Voyage Media Scam. Kind of interesting that this bootleg illegal book was reviewed by a scam company. The plot thickens. So, some other things. <laughs> Something I found hilarious. We're gonna move over here. Recommended adaptation format. Video game. Who would have ever thunk that Fallout could be a video game? <laughs> and th they gave it a good, a good and a fair. Hmm. You'll see that it is, it is not any of those things. So, on this page, here, the author writes about some stuff, about Fallout, and he gets uh, Obsidian's name wrong. He writes Oblivion. Oblivion's Fallout New Vegas. Sorry if you hear the truck. I'm, it's a highway over there. How do you get their name wrong here, but you have it right on the back? Now, there is, I believe there is actually an Oblivion game studio. Not just the game made by Bethesda. So, I don't know. But, if you write, if you see here, he originally wrote this as a screenplay. So he wanted to get this into a screenplay, based on someone else's work, that he didn't obtain the license to. Hmm. That, that, there we go. Now... Either this person 
knew very little about Fallout and just wrote a novel based off the wiki, or he's just trying to avoid copyright because he does change or get wrong several things. As you can see, there's a action report, which is kind of like general info, like here, Brotherhood of Steel. The Brotherhood of Steel, 21st century PAC turned private security corporation, one of the co-founders of vault -Tec Corp. Now, if you know anything about Fallout's lore, you know that's incredibly incorrect. The Brotherhood of Steel was a techni oh, yeah, technically pre-war group of military soldiers who abandoned the U.S. military after they found out what was going on with the FEV. And then there's also then Fallout 76 added the, uh, the Appalachian chapter. And they did definitely did not find they were they were not co-founders of Voltec. Unless he's just unless he thinks the Brotherhood of Steel and the Enclave are the same thing, because you could technically say the Enclave were co-founders of Voltec. But yeah, several things are different, and. This book does raise kind of some questions I have for Fallout and Bethesda and Xenomax. Why is there not more media like a book, you know, like World of Warcraft has? Or Star Wars has? God. Right when I'm filming, someone has to call the cops. <laughs> they found out about my illegal book. They're coming to get me. <laughs> but yes, I, like I said, why did... This does raise questions on why there's not more media like this. Because, to my knowledge, there is only two pieces of written literature about Fall about the Fallout series. Well, I think uh, two or three. Because I know that there is a canon comic slash graphic novel about Fallout that's a precursor to Fallout New Vegas called All Roads. And I believe that's written by Chris Avalone. And then there's a little comic strip, I think it's called a Penny Arcade comic, about the vault that had a puppet master in it. Well, had, not a puppet master. It was a guy who was trapped in a vault by himself, but the only thing else that was in there was puppets, and he went crazy, and it made him become like a crazy good killer, because he is mentioned in Fallout 3. But yeah, um, Bethesda, Xenomax, if you want, a novel made. I will write you a novel. I mean, I can assure you it will be better than this. And it won't be illegal because I'm actually asking you if I can do it. <laughs> but yeah, um, this is gonna end the physical portion of the video. Don't find the monkey ball. That's just been here a while. I think it also sets the mood a bit, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, we're gonna go into just kind of gameplay, or maybe just looking over the waste as a background, because my camera only has 11 minutes left, and as this book is 300 and I believe 23 pages, that is going to take a lot longer than 11 minutes to tell you about. So yes, stick around for quite possibly the most interesting stories about Fallout you will ever hear. I didn't say good. Now remember, not good, interesting. All right, see you then. So hey everybody, we're now on to the actual review of the story. This is gonna be pretty long. As I mentioned, the book is, I believe, 300 and some pages. Let's see, I get the book. It is 323 pages. All right, so let's get into Fallout. The Descendants of Vault 42, 43, and 55. Let's put the book over there because I have written a bunch of notes. Now, I am not a very good speaker. I don't really speak fluently that well, so if you don't enjoy listening to me, I'm sorry. You can go read this book on your own if you want. Go find it on the internet. I think you can buy it from, like, multiple places. So yes, some things about the book. Like I mentioned, he misspelled Obsidian to Oblivion. Um, in his inspiration, in this little page in, in the book, he mentions Fallout 1, 
3 and New Vegas being his inspirations. He seems to leave out Fallout 2, Tactics, and Phobos. So, I don't know. I mean, anybody can leave out Phobos. I mean, that game's just a weird game. Tactics, I can see leaving that out, but Fallout... Going from Fallout 1 to 3 in your inspiration is kind of weird, because, like, Fallout 2 is kind of integral there. Tactics and Phobos, not really. So, in the prologue, like I mentioned, he gets several things about the Fallout universe wrong, like Brotherhood of Steel being pre-war and founding vault Tech. Like, I think he thinks that... The Brother of the Steel and the Enclave are the same thing, or maybe to avoid try and avoid copyright, he made them both the same thing. So, chapter one is kind of interesting. This is one of the few, I think, okay portions of the book. And it describes a very big lead up to the Great War and the whole nuclear war. It describes wars in Europe, the Middle East, all over. Like, it's kind of interesting. However, the power of a mini nuke seems to change in this book rapidly. Let's let's just say that. So now we go to Vault Forty Three, where our main characters are. Yes, characters, not character. We don't. We have more than one main character. So Vault Forty Three in actual canon is a vault that I really really like. It's one of my favorite vaults. It's a very funny vault because it was introduced in the Penny Arcade comic. Um, and it contains 20 men, 10 women, and one very angry panther. I don't know. How, something about that idea just, like, there's no radiation. There's no chemicals. Oh, I just hit something. There's no hallucinations. It's like, hey, there's 20 men, 10 women, and here's a panther while you're at it. Uh, that's my favorite vault, Vault 43. His vault's, um, a bit different, and it seems to change rapidly of what's in this vault throughout the first couple chapters. So his Vault 43 is very boring, in my opinion, at least right now. Later on, it'll get more interesting. It's located in Michigan. So... In the first chapter, in the second, yeah, in this first chapter, he seems to imply that this vault housed every member of every race, like Asian, white, black, S South American, Inuit, Papua New Guinean, I don't know, everybody, every, anybody you can think of, they, they put them all in this vault. They did this to kind of create perfect humans, like, slowly, you would create, like, basically the South Park episode where there are, where there are no races, there's only one type of race. Kind of like that. Not as cool as having a panther, but you know, I guess that's that. Well, our three main characters are named Athena, Cleopatra, and Ulysses and Lori. Those are the four main characters. There's also a father that tends to leave very early on because he's with the Brotherhood of Steel. The Brotherhood of Steel in this live in the vault. Or at least they live in this vault. And they say, oh, we're the descendants of the Brotherhood of Steel. So they're not the actual Brotherhood of Steel, I guess. Is that really implied what they are technically, or who the leader of the Brotherhood of Steel is? Now, they go on patrols because they're trying to find a place that's better to live than their vault. They constantly go on these patrols. They're trying to find a utopia, apparently, or something like that. Now... This book, I'm going to tell you, this book is 90% about sex and rape and sexual things like that. So, the author goes on and describes every single woman, every single female that you meet in this game, in not this game, this book. And he describes them in detail, like their waist, their height, their uh, breast size, stuff like that. 
so the rest of this chapter seems to be about karate. It, it was really boring. It was just multiple multiple pages of karate and karate and like all types of karate stuff i mean not technically karate there was multiple different martial arts but let's just say karate to keep things simple and it's about athena ulysses and cleopatra training with their father to be better at it because their father is apparently an amazing fighter so he trains them in all these types of martial arts and Athena is not wearing any panties. That's a detail in the book, I guess. Then they go to bed. And that's the end of chapter one. A lot of karate and introducing you to characters. So, chapter two. This chapter is all over the place. Let's just say that. It goes between action and, let's just say, romance. Very detailed romance. <laughs> Some things that we learned about the vault. He did mention the panther. He does actually mention that this vault had a panther. Except he kind of ignores that that's the experiment and substitutes his own. So the vault contains 700 people. There is 700 people in this vault. Can that, somebody tell me what vault has 700 people in any other Fallout game? Like, when you go in, when you're Vault 111, what, there's maybe 50 people? 30 to 50 people, if that? How are you, how big is this vault if it's 700? Like, is there even 700 people in a single location in Fallout? I don't know. It, it just seems, um, yeah. Uh, and, um, so here's uh, the, the experiment that he substitutes in as well. Like I said, initially it was about the race thing, and in this chapter he seems to have changed it again, and, um, children are slowly genetically modified to be better at things. So, let's just, let's just start with the, the one I find the funniest. Vori was modified to suck dick. Really good. No, I'm not making that up. That's how a person modified their... That's how she's modified. She sucks dick. Which just reminds me of this. My favorite flavor of popsicle is dick! Alright. So, Ulysses is modified to have a 300 IQ to be perfect at fighting... To be super charismatic. And he has a 13 inch dick. That's a deep. Yeah, this is all in the book. I'm not making any of this up. Alright. 13 incher. And remember these are teenagers. These are not adults. These are teenagers in this book. And you can guess where Lori the dick sucker. And Ulysses the big dick. You can guess where this is going with the romance. Cleopatra, we'll get the Cleopatra's modifications later, and Athena's modifications as well. So, the first recon team dies. The, books, the book doesn't say how, just know that they're dead. The first recon team that went out, they're dead. And the vault's reactor is failing. Kind of simple, you know, you gotta go out of the vault, or the vault reactor's failing, that's why we need to find a new home. So, our protagonist and several friends uh, sneak out of the vault in the B team, the B rescue team. They sneak out as something like that. Now, some of them stay behind, like Cleopatra and Athena do not go with them. It is, I believe it, it's Ulysses, somebody else. Some other person and Lori all sneak out with this recon team. And apparently killing a single super mutant is a very big deal in this book. Like, super mutants are implied to be a lot tougher than they are in the Fallout games, I believe. Yeah. 
So that's kind of the end of this chapter. Now they didn't kill a super mutant. Well, they didn't kill a super mutant. Their mother killed a super mutant with her bare hands or something. Chapter three. Now he kind of divides each of these, this book into three separate books, but they're all a continuation of the same story. Like it will say, chapter th or chapter four will be start of book one. Chapter three is the last of. Or no, chapter four is the start of book two. Chapter one is, you know, you get what I mean. Like every three chapters is considered a new book to him. And I just want to say, this book is filled with spelling errors, grammatical errors, run-on sentences, sentences that don't make sense, and all types of stuff like that. And he has, um, the author seems to randomly like capitalizing every letter of a word. Like, it will just be like... <laughs> Let me just find an example. Let's see. Boop, boop, boop. Let's see. Book. Ah, here we go. I felt it in my bones that I am meant to see more. Do more! Like, do is all capitalized and more is all capitalized. If that's what I mean by he'll, he'll just randomly capitalize every letter of a word. So, chapter three. Things actually happen in this chapter, but not great. So, they see the sky, and, um, this immediately makes them horny, so they abandon the recon team that they snuck out with, set up a tent, and begin having sex. As soon as they get out the vault, like, oh god, gotta have, just gotta suck that dick, I guess. So, during this, um, 99% of the recon team they were with just dies. They die to ghouls. Apparently in this book, a ghoul can tear through power armor in like two seconds. And everyone died. Except one guy. One guy comes back and is like, oh my god, where were you? We needed those supplies. Then, yeah. So, there's them and this other guy. And now they fled into the remnants of an old house and they're swarmed by ghouls. And the author calls ghouls... You won't believe this. <laughs> He'll say the ghouls are like... He says the ghouls are like irradiated skeletors. Not skeletons. He did not write skeletons. He wrote skeletors. You know. Ah, He-Man. It's I. Oh, I can't do skeletors voice. Jesus. That's way too. It's, it's too weird to do skeletors voice if you're not good at it. But you get what I mean. Skeletor from He-Man. That's what he calls them. <laughs> uh, yeah, this book. So, the last member of the team that's alive, that's not them... Uh, he just randomly commits suicide, so he doesn't get killed by ghouls. Now, the ghouls are being controlled by raiders. They have collars around their neck, and that controls them. So, yes, and they meet the leader of these or this group of raiders. You're going to find out there's multiple groups of raiders. The leader is called Nero. And they fight Nero, and uh, Lori, the dick sucker, dies. Her dick sucking abilities prove no use in combat, I guess. Who would have thunk? So yeah, there's one of the main characters dead in the second chapter, or third chapter, whatever chapter we're on. And he uses them to get into the vault. Like he, he captures them. Nero captures them, and he leads them, and they lead him to the vault. And then they get into the vault. And, um, yeah, they raid the vault and everyone dies. And the overseer lady blows herself up with a mini nuke, which causes the entire vault to explode. And that's the end of the vault. Except they were able to escape because their mom has super secret stealth suits. And multiple of them that perfectly fit their bodies. And they sneak out through the sewers. With some survivors. 
But it turns out their mom is dying. Cause she's bleeding or something. And then it, she tells them about their modifications. Now this is where we can see all of their modifications. So, she tells them how her and her, the husband modified the kids. Athena is modified to be super good at fighting and super agile and have a super brain and all that stuff. Cleopatra is super duper fast at learning. And then she, then this is, <laughs> this is the part that you like. Um, she has pheromones that make people like her. Yeah, I guess she just farts everywhere and people think it smells good. I don't know. So, Ulysses, get this, he can see streams of cause and effect. I don't know what that means, but I'm guessing he can see the future. Like he can tell what's going to happen out of each particular choice he makes. This is never brought up, however. Oh, he's also super charismatic. I think I mentioned that. So people can't hate him. Except I do. <laughs> oh, and his big dick, his 13-inch dick, was originally going to be 18 inches. They're like, oh no, that we can't give him that. I'm, like, I'm not making any of this up, people. This is in. This is all in the book. So they go on and they escape, and the the way they escape is through the sewage, and they come out to a pond or something like. A sewage let off, so like I guess a pond or a lake or whatever, and they go and fight mire larks. Not mire lurks. He has it spelled wrong. He puts mire larks. A lark is a bird, sir. So whenever I read this, I thought they were just fighting small, little birds, but no, he's that he meant mire lurks, crab monsters. And then the survivors go on a boat. Alright, there's two boats. One filled with the main characters. The other one filled with some other survivors and children and stuff. So, yeah. Now, you're not going to guess what happens next. A bunch of them are abducted by aliens. Yep, not everyone. Not everyone's abducted by aliens. All the kids and their mom are abducted by aliens, and anyone who is not abducted is stunned. They, they can't move. And that's the end of that chapter. So, chapter four, book, which is book two, which is chapter one of book two. So, in this chapter, we get to learn about two new factions. We also learn the history of the Spartan Raiders. The first faction is Troy. The other faction, obviously I just said, the, I, whoops, I read too far. The other faction is the Rangers. But back to the Spartans. They were formed from a prison and basically a bunch of prisoners and they were originally called the Horde. And they went about killing and raping everything. They were led by Mark Anthony. Because of course his name is Mark Anthony. Just like Troy and Cleopatra. Very creative naming scenario we have here. Oh, and they play rap music on giant speakers at their at their hideout. Just thought that was funny. So they managed to find Cleopatra washed up on the shore and capture her. So her magic fart gas arouses all these space. Her magic fart gas arouses all of these raiders, and now they're infatuated with her. Like, they don't want to hurt her or anything. So, the female Spartans have to deal with her. And they make her strip. Now remember, this is a teen girl, which is kind of weird, but okay. She then suddenly remembers all of her martial arts training. Now, Cleopatra was kind of the weak one of the bunch like she was not good at anything but now suddenly it kicked in her head and she's perfect at every um martial arts every martial arts type and uh she kills the female spartans instantly or at least breaks some of their bones instantly 
Now on to Troy. This is where Ulysses ends up. They are led by a big boob queen and her big boob daughter, who are super advanced, but they tend to call helicopters whirlybirds. Which is just weird that you would... Like, they have helicopters. Like, Troy operates helicopters, but yet they're calling them whirlybirds. Don't know why that is, but okay. Uh, that's all with Ulysses and Troy for now. So now we go back to Athena, or we go to Athena, and she's with the Rangers, and she just instantly beats everyone in this pit arena because this teenage girl is just that good. And they make her a Ranger just because she's that good. So, this is where we meet Fran, the Nightkin. Oh, and get ready for this. Alright, you'll, you'll want to be sitting down, or standing up, wherever you are right now. Fran is a female Nightkin with the body of a female bodybuilder, and she has big boobs. She also loves sex. This is a, a big boob. Super mutant nightkin that loves sex. Alright, let that sink in. So, the group goes to the armory, and Athena calls a plasma rifle crap, and now she can dual wield 12.7 mm SMGs perfectly, because that's her weapon she's going to use. That's the end of this chapter. Obviously, these chapters are summarizations, but I think you get what I'm... You don't want to read the whole thing. I read this whole book and things happen. Just resetting the uh, background there. So, chapter 5. This is one of the longest chapter. It is a little over 60 pages. It focuses mainly on Ulysses and Cleo, not as much on Athena. Even though this is the longest chapter, not much happens compared to some other ones. So, Ulysses is summoned by the Queen of Troy, and uh, uh, before this, he was kind of like hitting on the uh, princess of Athena, even though his girlfriend, Lori, just died, and now he's like, oh, look, another girl. So, yeah, and he's summoned by the Queen, and so a guard, one of the guards of Troy, goes up and, you know, gets his attention, like, hey, the Queen wants you. So, the guard touches him on the shoulder, right? And he basically instantly almost kills the guard instantly. Has him on the ground and only stops when the when I think the queen or the princess tells him to. Alright. So Ulysses was going to murder this seemingly innocent guard just for trying to get his attention. What a great hero. And because he's so good, the queen asks him to train the, her guard. So, that's kind of it for um, Ulysses right now. Let's go back to Cleo. For Cleo, well, she's, she's now the leader of the raiders. Her fart gas makes it so Mark Anthony is instantly in love with her and all the other raiders, for at least 99% of them. And so she's basically the leader of the raiders now. Fart gas powers are overpowered, please nerf. So yeah, basically all the raiders are her puppets, more or less. Not all, all almost all the raiders are her puppets. Now all the raider factions of all over this middle wasteland, as he calls it, come in for a meeting. So... Cleo shows up, and, and one of the raiders is like, I'm not listening to a child. And so Cleo jumps down off of this throne onto the raider and instantly decapitates him with a machete. In mere, basically in, in about two or three sentences. So I'm guessing that means like near instantly. Because, you know, she's just that good. 
She then fights multiple raiders, uh, killing them all or beating them up viciously. And that's how a teenage uh, raider, and that's how a teenage girl became the leader of the raiders in, I believe, like under a week because of magic fart gas. Oh, the raiders are also playing Tupac, apparently. And then she goes back to Mark Anthony and he's like, oh, I want sex. And he's and she's like, no. And she's like, why don't you go get one of those winches? You heard me right. I said winches. The author used the wrong word. Not winches. Winches. A winch. Like you use the to toe stuff. Yeah, he used that instead of wench. Okay. So, Ad Athena did a little bit of stuff with the Rangers, and they eventually met the Brotherhood Outcast. You know, the Brotherhood Outcast in Fallout 3 with their cool black and red power armor. Yeah, she, made, she meets them. Or at least a chapter of them that's in Michigan. And they're led by... Oh, this, this is hilarious. Elder Leon. Not Elder Lions. Elder Leon. He switched one letter. And I read that and I was like, Leon from Resident Evil? It's Leon. I've succeeded in extricating my subject. Sure. And they have captured a female ghoul called Flat Jack. She's Canadian, so she says A after everything. Except he didn't write A, like E-H. He wrote it A-Y-E, like I-E. I, laddie. Shiver me timbers. I don't know. Usually when you write A for Canadians, it's E-H. Like A, not A. -E. I don't know. So, we learned a little bit more about Troy. Troy comes from Vault 42. So, Vault 42 in actual canon, um, only appears in the Fallout Bible, which I don't believe the Fallout Bible is actually canon. But in the Fallout Bible, there was no lights above 40 watts. In the bootleg Fallout, on the, that's what we're going to call this, bootleg Fallout universe. This vault was a mega vault. Oop, I hit the mic. Sorry about that. It's a mega vault filled with Blu-ray players. Tons of Blu-ray players in Fallout. And there was tons of HBO shows, like, about the Roman Empire and stuff like that. And there was also tons of porn, like, Booty Talk 69 and Adventures of Ass Men number 42. Not making that up, it is in the book. That's the end of that chapter. Next chapter, we learn some more things. The people of Troy are not humans. Or at least the queen is not, and her daughter. Now you're probably wondering, what are they? He calls them evolved tumblers. Now, I'm guessing that's his play on trying to avoid copyright for the tunnelers from New Vegas. You know, the green or blackish lizard people from the one DLC. They come from... It was really confusing what he wrote. I think it's like they originally come from Vault 52, but someone brought them to 42, and then they evolved into people-like looking things. Yeah, so that. There's that. Ulysses then meets two new friends. He makes two new friends. A gangster, old mafia-style ghoul. And a super mutant midget. Yeah, yes, a super mutant midget. You know, this, uh, which is kind of interesting, as we don't actually see super mutant midgets in Fallout. He calls them a peck. P-E-C-K. -E peck. They, his name is, I think, Dr. Abraham? Dr. Abraham or F Professor Abraham? Something like that. So they escape, the three of these people escape, and they go to Siamese City. 
Now, Siamese City is, um, fairly interesting. It's where you go to have sex with a sex clone. And there's no weapons or no clothes allowed in Siamese City. And previously to this, he, he had sex with the, the princess. So the queen finds out. The way the queen finds out is that she smells it. And in order to make sure, she feels inside of the lower regions, pulls it out, her hand out, and then tastes. I told you the brace. You did not mishear me. She stuck her hand in there, pulled it out, tastes, and yelled, Who? Which makes me think of that old meme from the uh, last Metal Gear Solid game. Where he's like, such a lust for revenge, who? This makes me think, such a lust for puss, who? <laughs> I don't know. It, 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 it's this book. So, back to Ulysses and the Peck and the Mafia Ghoul at Siamese City. So, Ulysses gets drunk and then he gets seemingly raped by two clones, one being a trans woman. A trans clone woman. Like, they like... Siamese City, basically, you have sex with people and they steal your DNA and then they make you... You know, they make a sex slave version of you. Which, I mean, that's fairly interesting for Fallout. Though, it's not like cloning has ever worked in Fallout. Because, as we see with Gary, it cloning doesn't work very well. And there's just a page about... They're going on and on about his perfect dick. Yes. So, then they leave with the... The ghoul. And the peck. And they find Flat Jack. Or they go rescue Flat Jack. Because the ghoul, him, Flat Jack, the female ghoul, and the mafia ghoul are together. Or together with a friend. They have a friend. They're part of their mafia thing. Which is called the Outfit. That's their group. They're called the Outfit. They're like mercenaries. They're mercenaries even though they're like mafia guys. So kind of like the ones from Fallout 4. The, um... I forget what those guys are called. You know who I'm talking about. They're in the unfinished vault. They're they're like the mafia in theory. They have um Nick, the captured Nick. Oh, something to know about Flat Jack. So they re they rescued her from the um the outcast who blew her arm off with a 50 cal. And she's just like, oh, I'm over that, as she meets with the uh, with the group. And something else to know, uh, she's a ghoul that likes anal. Yeah, yeah, you heard me. I'm not, remember, I'm not making anything up in this book. So, the Mafia ghoul and the Flat Jack, they leave, and now it's just Ulysses and Professor Abe, the peck. The midget Superman. And then themselves running from raiders because Ulysses back in Siamese City punched um, some raiders. And they find, they somehow find themselves in a nuclear missile silo. Filled with spore carriers. You know, the spore carriers from Fallout in Vegas. So Professor Abe gives Ulysses a shish kebab. And he gets a flaming power fist. And they seemingly destroy all of the sport carriers and in the fighting Ulysses falls on the on the launch code and just launches a nu launches a nuclear missile somewhere he's professor abe says it's going to china but this this is never expanded on in the meantime cleo the smelly has been gathering a giant lord of the rings army all right, she has several thousand raiders, and they've been capturing eight thousand ghouls. Eight thousand ghouls they have collared and ready to be used. Eight thousand ghouls. She wanted ten thousand, 
and not getting 10,000 made her angry. Because she throws temper tantrums, I guess. And she kills any other raider that dares stands up to her. Anybody that dares question her or her judgment, dead. Like, she killed the leader of the RPG tribe. They... They have rock, lots of rocket propelled grenades. That's their thing. They build rocket propelled grenades. He stood up to her. Dead. End of chapter. So, in, in, in the next chapter, he talks a lot about Fallout New Vegas in this. Or at least a little bit. At least a couple paragraphs of Fallout New Vegas. Right? So, he mentions how after... Mr. House is gone. There's just NCR everywhere. So I'm guessing that means he thinks that the NCR canon, the NCR ending is the most canon one, I guess. So this brings us to the final chapter. The final chapter. We're almost done. And I would say it's almost good, except it immediately gets bad. So, Troy and Sparta go to war, and there's huge over-exaggeration of everything. Like, Troy has, like, hundreds of mortars, or a whole bunch of mortars, and they're shooting the ghouls with them. And, oh, and uh, Troy uses unevolved tunnelers as their troops, and... Yeah. It, it's just a big battle, and there's, hu like I said, huge over-exaggerations of stuff. Like, apparently... Cleopatra, because she learns super fast, she read tons of books on generals, and now she's the greatest general of all time. Yes, this her superpower, she just learned every strategy ever known to man, I guess, and she's just perfect. Except, the way he writes this makes me think that she's actually a terrible general. Because, as I said, Troy has helicopters. Right? I mentioned they have helicopters. And... In order to shoot down one helicopter, they shoot 100 RPGs at it. That is what's written. 100 RPGs for one helicopter. Alright, I mean, some of your raiders had 50 cows. I don't know why you just didn't use that, but okay. And, oh, I forgot to mention, Ulysses and Athena... Both separately, they've wound up in the Forbidden Zone. And they eventually meet each other. And, you know, they're super... They rejoice, you know, they're super happy to meet each other again. <laughs> and they're fighting raiders. Like, they start shooting at raiders. Nero's raider group, who isn't with the main raiders, because he's one of the only people who is immune to Cleopatra's fart gas. So, yeah. Now... <laughs> You won't believe what happens next. They're all abducted by aliens. Yep. Athena, Ulysses, the Peck, the... the Fran, the busty nightkin. The ro... Oh, I forgot to mention. Fran also has robots with her. Like, she has a Mr. Gutsy and a Sentry Bot. Both of them died to raiders. Except it's not a Mr. Gutsy. He calls it a Mr. Gusty. He switches the S from, you know, he just switches the S from which side of the T it's on. So, they're all being examined by the aliens, and they're all naked now, because reasons. And they're all being examined by the aliens, and I guess this freaks Fran out, and so she goes crazy and, like, breaks out and just starts killing all the, everyone, all the aliens, just all dead. Not, I mean, not all of them. I mean, then, you know, everybody else gets freed and they're fighting the aliens. Then they finally find their mom and dad. The writer has finally remembered his original plot of finding their, the, the dad. So, in the meantime, in all the chaos, Ulysses, or not Ulysses, Nero has captured an alien. And he has him basically using the death ray to shoot at Troy and Sparta. Because they really don't like... Because he doesn't like either of them. <laughs> so he's just shooting the giant laser at both sides. And you know everybody's dying down there. And then Ulysses uses his 300% IQ to learn how to pilot the ship 
perfectly. Yep, yeah, you know, just like, oh, I know how to pilot an alien ship, you know, despite never being on here, but, you know, sure. And then they go back to Earth. All right, except they don space uniforms, and they use the ancient alien theory where they come and say, we're gods, and if you oppose us, then anybody, any of the raiders, or any of, anybody who's left, they just shoot with, like, a laser beam that disintegrates them. Because some super mutant who was in the battle of Troy and Sparta stands up, and he's just like, I'm not dealing with this, and then they just evaporate him. So they find Cleo's body, unconscious. Hit by a giant death laser. Yeah, just unconscious. Yep, giant city destroying death laser. Laser. Unconscious. Okay. So, like I said, they think they're gods and they're telling them, like, what can and can't be done. Like, no more rape, no more blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, like I said, anybody that stands out to them, dead. Disintegrated, I guess. So... Everybody, so they give Cleo a stim pack, and the next day she's better. Happy ending. Everybody's good. Yep, that's and that's the book. That's the book of the survivors of Vault Forty Two, Vault Forty Three, and Fifty Two. Yep, forty. Oh, fifty five, not fifty two. Oh, and there is an ep an epilogue. So, like I said, they use their new spaceship to enforce laws and. Everybody gets a sex clone from Siamese land. Happy ending. Everybody's good, I guess. So. Now, I left out a lot. Let's give this book a final review. 2 out of 10. That's what I'm giving it. 2 out of 10. Like I said, I left out a lot. Like, there's a lot more sex and stuff like that in this book than I mentioned here. Or, as I mentioned in the beginning, intense romance. So, like I said, it's Fallout. This is the, He wrote this based on Fallout, but he seems he wanted to write Fifty Shades of Radiation, in my opinion. Like, the story was originally, oh, we need to find our father, because he went out to the vault, and now he's missing, and bleh. And then the writer seems to have forgot about that for several chapters. And it's kind of just Fallout 3 story in a way. You'll go find your father. character development. Awful. Ulysses. He had absolutely no character development. He was perfect in the vault and he came out of the vault perfect and at the end of the story he's still perfect. In every way. And I really don't like him. I don't like that character Ulysses. Athena. Um. Again, no character development. She was kind of always good at everything just like Ulysses and she basically stayed the same throughout the entire story. Cleopatra is the only one with character development. At the beginning of the story, she was kind of this weak, like, look at me, I'm sexy kind of girl. You know, the popular girl in school, I guess you would say. And by the end of the book, she became a god of death. And she killed everyone because of her magic fart gas. So yeah. That's, that's the story of this bootleg Fallout book. Um, tell me what you think. Or don't. If you made it this far, tell me what you think. Alright. So if you enjoyed my video and you enjoyed Fallout, subscribe to my channel, I guess, if you want. You don't have to. And I also have a secondary channel, which is a Fallout lore channel based on the Fallout weapons of the Fallout franchise. I'll have both of those in the description. So yeah. If you made it this far all the way through, tell me what you think of what you heard. Um, I don't know what else to say. So yeah, bye.